Hi, I am Taylor. And I am Nicole. And this is Glitter and Cat Litter. In today's episode, we talk about guitar. We talk about calluses. We talk about getting up in the morning. My new Lego that I'm very proud of, which I was really afraid to just lift up because I thought it might fall apart as I lift it. Um, Yeah. If you would like episodes early and exclusives, please get a membership at glitterandcatlitter.com or on YouTube. And we hope you enjoy this episode. So I've been doing this thing in the mornings, which you may have noticed or not noticed, where I'm just allowing myself to wake up, like allowing however much time my body needs to wake up. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed. It's been weird because I feel slightly stressed out because I'm not getting up, but then I actually feel that I get more done in the day because I didn't have to like backtrack fight myself. Okay. Because you're fighting yourself for. Typically, like if I make myself get up, then yeah. I'm like, I get I, I get into the things that I think I need to do to be productive and start my day. But then I kind of have to backtrack because I'm like moving a little slower. I'm a little out of it. And then I have to like give myself moments to rest and and then I can get into my day. And now I'm just kind of letting myself do that at the start when I first wake up, just allowing myself to like wake up. And it takes like an hour. Today it took an hour and a half, which was ridiculous. But I think it's actually more beneficial. Maybe. I don't know. I know that that is a complete luxury that I can do that. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> but it's, well, it's only a luxury because you're, well, you work for yourself. So. Yeah. Sure. But you, it, if somebody has a schedule to follow, then just wake up earlier, earlier. to me said thing and then now everybody has the luxury yeah it's not like it's not like no one can do that right like i i know that on mondays now i'm gonna have to do that earlier i'm gonna have to wake up earlier which is so weird for you to say because you take well i guess you just you take so long in the mornings i feel like it's not a good thing that you take that long that long in the morning i feel like you need to like like i know it feels good for you right now because you're just like just slowly going through it, but like your morning routine takes like two and a half hours. That's a lot of time. That's a long time. That's a long time. Mine is like hour 15, like buttoned up. And that's when yeah. I go slow, you know, yeah. like on, like on Sundays when I have to leave like within an hour and a half of getting up and like, I'm, you know, I have to be very quick and kind of plan more and be like on top of it. It's like, I still have to cut a bunch of corners to get through just to do yeah. that. And mostly it's getting out of bed sooner. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like an hour and a half is a good amount of time before you have to leave. That's like plenty of time. It should, I feel like it should be plenty of time. I mean, it is plenty of time. But the, the, the crazier thing is I do so many things in the morning compared to you. Yeah. Where like your morning routine that takes you that two hours is like, Two you things. said two hours, right? Um, or did I say two hours? Today it was like two and a half hours. Okay. Normally it's like two-ish hours, right? Yeah. Okay. So I was just like, did I just make up a sometime that's <laughs> way longer than you? Um, but so like for me to do my, like today I got out of bed at like 6.50, basically seven. Yeah. Um, or just slightly after seven. And I was like full ready for the day by 8.20. Okay. And I think I I think I was like washing my face at 707 because I put my watch on and I was very confused. I the watch face I have is off of um it's one of Apple's watch this is such a side check. It's the it's one of the Analog. the regular Apple watch faces that you can get or can have with your Apple Watch, but it's the one that's off of the Rolex. It's it's mirrored off of the Rolex. Yeah. The aviator Rolex, the aviation Rolex. I don't know enough about watches. I don't know, but it's the it's the one where you can change the time zone on the dial that's the outside. And I don't. I leave it not changed, but I forgot that it shows you what hour marker you're on. Oh. So it was super weird that it was pointing at seven, but it's also based. The color of it is based off of um, how much sun and darkness you have, like where the sun is. 
So it like so changes around it, you're right? You're not really going to be able I doubt you're going to be able to see this at all. Well, uh, if you for I mean I'm going to explain zoom it. In. I'm going to explain it anyway for the audio people. So they're like the watch face that I have, I really like the color green. I'm wearing a green watch band. So it's matching my green and it's got a like a stone color off white on it and the off white color is the amount of sunlight, which is weird because it's on the bottom, and then the green, the dark color is the the amount of night mm-hmm. that there is. So it was it was over to the like the right side of the watch face, closer to the four mm-hmm. hand on an analog watch or with the four number. And it said seven. And I was like, that's weird because it says four like on the watch face. But then the dial says seven. I'm like, I'm so confused. That's the only reason I know what time it was when I was getting up because I put my huh. watch on and I was like, I'm very confused right now that it says seven right next to the four. But I'm unsure of why it says it here. And then I went. Oh, Ooh. it's because that's the, like when sunrise is right now, and that's when the yeah. the like it shows it on the thing. Anyway, okay, that's I, that's how that's why I knew what time it was when I got up. Yeah, I'm in a weird pattern right now with my sleep. Like I've been sleeping so heavy in the morning and dreaming like crazy vivid dreams. Yeah, you like almost killed me the other morning. I like hurt Taylor because I was having a nightmare, and I was like attacking this person that was attacking me i was defending myself and i remember in the dream i was digging my nails into this man's face because it was the only thing i could grab i had my hands full and it was like crazy fighting and i was digging my nails into this man's face and then all of a sudden taylor's like ow what is happening and i had my hand on his leg and i dug my nails into his leg in real life and i was like oh my god and then it took me so long to get out of that like i had to completely reset because i was like shaken up well i would yeah oh it was so weird it was so bizarre i was like very much ready to get out of bed like before that and then you like rolled over and i was like well i can i'm i'm still fine being here like i'm not super stoked to get up yet so yeah. like this is fine and then you i felt you like you were like a cat you like put your claws <laughs> out and i felt it and i was like weird okay <laughs> and then i felt you push a little bit and then drag a little bit did and I? then push harder and drag harder. You were like, there was like three or four stages of how hard you were going. And the moment you went push and started to drag, I went, I used profanities. And I said, <laughs> I said, what the? And I was like, I like didn't hit you, but I like pushed you. Like, yeah. to like I was like, yo, this is not, I was like, we're not doing this. Yeah. And I like woke you up or tried to. And then you went harder and then you went harder. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, F that, F that. And I like threw the blankets off and I got out of bed. I was like, we are not doing this. <laughs> I was like, this is not cool. I'm done. I was like, nope, I'm up. I We're was, out. I was fighting. <laughs> it was it was scary. I was like, okay, bye. I don't think ya. that's ever happened where like my dream, I reacted in real life. Well, I mean, you're you're unconscious so i don't know that you would be able to answer that well but i've never I can hurt speak, you before i right? can speak for you that i have not paid attention to it and um that's the only time in the whole time we've been together that you've ever clawed me <laughs> sorry you need to get declawed or something i do need to cut my nails and do my nails i haven't painted my nails in a long time i should I, do that i overdid the my left index finger you know i might have not actually overdone it it might be from me changing the guitar strings oh that the, could be the well, you know, it's a little low. It's definitely low anyway. But that definitely did not help. Yeah. Because I, you know, guitar Taylor, strings are pointy. So, you know, when you move them around, they stab you pretty good. It sounded crazy. Taylor changed his guitar strings the other night. What do you mean it sounded crazy? The like, of the guitar strings. Oh, when it's pulling through the bridge? Yeah. Yeah, I had my AirPods in and I was editing in here and he was out at his desk and I had it on the... Uh, noise cancellation oh and you could still hear and that i could through still it? hear it was like screeching and yeah. i was like oh that sounds crazy over here i can't even imagine not having headphones in and hearing that that close it's a very comforting sound to that's me so i mean that's kind of like it's, when i walked into the room that smelled like musty oh, it, skates it was, and i was like it no, smells it, so good okay hold on it didn't smell like musty skates it smelled like like old rotting skates and rotting wood and rotting electronics. There was no, it was, it was the most deterring smell that I have oh, ever been in. Oh, it so comforting. You walked in, you were like, oh, it smells so good. And I was like, what? And I go, oh my <laughs> God, I feel like I'm going, I'm going in somewhere where there's something dying. But there probably is. 
No, but it didn't smell like a dying something. It smelled like it something smelled was rotted and yeah, old. Like not like a living thing is dying. Like the non living things, like the wood and the yeah. the materials and it stuff. It smelled like a wet cabin. No. I you have not <laughs> been to a wet cabin, I don't think, because that's not what a wet cabin smells like. Uh, anyway, go back to your guitar strings, but that yeah, it's like a familiar, nice, comforting thing that is deterring from other people. Sure. Yeah. That, that well, I think sense? it's because from having played guitar, to, I don't even know how long I've played guitar now. It's a lot of years. It's like more. It's scary when you add it up. I did that. Oh, for... 20, 20 years. Yeah. Or it's, <laughs> yeah, multiple decades. Okay. But like, um, so changing guitar strings. I also, if anybody is a guitar player on here, um, I am the guitar string changing that everyone tells you not to do like change your guitar strings every month to two months 30 to 60 days if you play pretty often how long and is how much is pretty often like every day for like a little bit it's like or but, or you if you to... but if you leave them out because okay. the, the, it's a deteriorating product so like yeah. it's metal and sure. it fully affects the way the guitar plays one how it feels on your hand too and then what it sounds like three yeah like it, it it's all it's like not changing. Well, piano strings are different. That's that's a bigger beast and way more expensive. But your cushions, same idea. Your bearings. Sure, it's it's probably closer to like the cushions if you skate every day. Yeah, and you're on your edges. Like those deteriorate Which and those I break. Right. Well, don't. of course, you know. But the guitar strings. I when when I was playing in the band, I would play. Which was not, fifteen years ago. It was a long time ago. (laughs) Not joking. I would play five to seven hours, like five to six days a week. Really? Just straight through guitar. Just constantly sweating all over the guitars and just like playing all day. Like the calluses on my fingers were like, like crazy. Like the tops of my fingers were so hard. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. It was honestly like, like porcelain. It was wild. I couldn't feel anything. You could, I could take a guitar string and poke it, and it was like probably like an eighth inch deep before I would feel it. Wild, it's crazy. Um, but I would change my strings like every two months, and people are like, "Why don't you change your strings all the time?" And I'm like, I, "Well, one, I don't care. Two, are they kind uh, of expensive? No. <laughs> then they were even cheaper. They were like six bucks a pack for like the nice ones. Oh, okay. The really expensive ones were twelve. Now the like regular ones are twelve. Okay, because so I'm like, not... that's kind of a pain in the butt if that's expensive every month. No, but it's 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 the equivalent of like, do you want it to sound good or do you want it to sound like whatever? Yeah. Because it really makes a difference. It, okay. it really does. But it it was just one of those things where like I never changed the guitar strings. And then like, I think, no, nope, it's been five plus years. I have not <laughs> changed the strings since I've lived here. 100, yeah, 100%. And, and... The strings that are on the guitar that I rebuilt with Isaac, I think I reused old strings. I didn't even I put did new ones. I did hear you ask him that. Like, did we reuse these? We didn't buy new ones. Because they did I not. I don't think you did. They did not ones. feel new. If if they weren't reused, they were 10-year-old strings that I had never used. And when did you make that with Isaac? Like two years ago? I think it was 2020. So it was like four, four years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So it's it's been a long time since I redid the strings. And then so... I redid the strings the other night on all three of my guitars and I bought, I was doing a little test. I wanted to try the strings that I've always liked and then I wanted to try Isaac's suggestion of strings. And so I put them both on the two different guitars and I think I like Isaac's suggestion better now. But I think also without calluses on your fingers, my favorite (laughs) strings suck because they're a little bit more rough so it hurts a lot versus the the other ones. But Well, if you play enough piano uh, and guitar and... Man, to play to play guitar enough to, I remember distinctly that starting of guitar. Yeah. It was so painful for like two months. Yeah, and then it was gone forever. The pain. Yeah, yeah, be, because because you, you have to build the calluses, and it took like two months. And it's, I don't know. There's nothing else like it. But if you push put like that pressure of that thin of metal on your fingers that would hurt. for like an hour and you have to press hard. You can't let go. Otherwise it doesn't sound right or it yeah. doesn't sound like anything. And so you have to push. And <laughs> I I can vividly feel 
I, it's there's got to be relations to skating, but like In I can my toes. I, yeah, yeah, I have calluses built up. I can vividly feel the feeling of playing guitar too long. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't miss that part. Starting anything, doing anything, like after either never doing it or not doing it for a very long time, it hurts. Like your body has to build up a defense against it. Like yeah. my big toes, the bottoms of my big toes. I can even feel it right now because I'm just wearing socks. But like it's it's like the inside of my big toe down to the bottom because I must press really hard, especially on my right foot, which would make sense with pushing um, Mm. because I'd be digging in. I dig with my big toes. It's not really my little toes, but little claws or digging. er, (laughs) Just just the big toe. I dig in when I'm pressing in my skate and I feel it and my heels, too, which is weird because I never really. I think part of it is you're just on your feet always anyway. So yeah. like you're going to build calluses like that. I think that's pretty natural, even though you're in cushioned skates. Like, yeah. But I remember so like when I was little, I used to get blisters all the time in my skates. And now I don't even with brand new skates. I don't understand if my body is just like learned that I'm going to be OK and it has enough callus around everything <laughs> that it's fine. I don't know the difference. I, w- I think. Like, I wonder if you would get, because did you get blisters when you would no. start? No. Huh. Maybe. I don't remember. We'll report back when Taylor has practiced for <laughs> I mean, a little bit. It's probably really similar to like when you hold weights in your hands and you start yeah. to get the, the, the calluses on your knuckles. Yeah, because I didn't really get blisters. I still have them and I haven't been weightlifting as much. Yeah, same. Well, I, I kind of got some of these from playing drums anyway, but they've they've grown exponentially because of um weightlifting yeah but i also don't have sweaty hands so that would be why i wouldn't get a (laughs) blister i feel like a blister at least in my experience happens when it's more like a friction movement while you're while there's pressure so like if it's just holding that if it's rubbing yeah because if i'm just like pressing Mm -hmm. i don't really get a blister but Mm -hmm. if it's like press and dragging and it's that constant i feel like my skin would or i would blister before i calloused That would make sense. It might also be a difference in how much you do it. Like, do you do it like a couple times and then it's done and then you get a a blister? Or do you do it all the time and it just becomes a callus because it's such a constant thing? It's hard to remember now, but I feel like it was a blister for like two months and then all of a sudden it wasn't. Then maybe you're just so calloused on your feet that it doesn't matter. (laughs) Just as a human, I'm so calloused. (laughs) (laughs) So dumb. Sure. Yes. Let's go with that. Uh, You're so callous. Speaking of sweat, though, I have a phone case, the Apple, um, what is it? It's the silicone case. Yeah. Yeah. And Taylor had the same case on his phone. And Danielle, uh, one of my friends and a member on my site that I finally got to meet in person, which was so exciting. Um, But she held my phone and she was like, this case is so smooth. This feels so good. And Taylor was like, it's because of her sweaty hands. Feel this one. And his did not feel as smooth. Didn't feel as good. So it's a benefit. Yeah. Danielle was trying to be so polite to you over that. And like, be <laughs> like, no, maybe it's just something. I was like, no, Danielle, it look, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not ripping Nicole apart with this. I'm merely saying that I wish my phone case felt like this too, but my hands don't sweat. Because she was trying to say it was like lotion. And I'm like, no. Danielle, I put more lotion on than Nicole does. I promise. I don't know about that. I think I we're put, pretty equal on that. I put that. lotion on my hands like seven times a day. Yeah, I do too. And still look mm. at these knuckles. There's a piece of dust on the camera. Oh, can I use your your yeah, thick stuff? I've told you you could use it whenever <laughs> you want to use it. I don't know what is wrong with my hands. Dry? You need more water? I am drinking so much water. Look, people have been... People with tattoos have been complimenting how dark my tattoos are in person. It doesn't work. It, on video, they always look dark anyway because there's more contrast. So there's a, there's more. There's more. More. So it doesn't sure. look like they're not yeah. dark. But, I mean, that's the thing with tattoos is they're, they can be pretty gray if you don't have enough hydration. Mine are pretty dark. Yeah. I well, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that yours aren't dark, but I'm saying I have more tattoos. So it's more blatant when they're gray. Mm -hmm. Your lines on your tattoos don't blow out as much as mine. Uh, Martin doesn't push as hard. No, mine are from Martin. Oh. It's just our skin. 
I don't know. Because, like, look at these lines that you can see on my van. See how they've kind of, like... I feel like mine were a little bit more blown out, and then I had more liquids, and then they became less blown out. I don't so know. maybe I'm just dehydrated. I'm saying, drink more water, do more hydration. I don't know. My knuckles are just like, they don't quit. I think it's also the weather, because my, my left... No, this is my right hand. My right <laughs> hand over here was, for a few days, was pretty... um pretty dry it's huh. doing better now i um you brought up 2020 i was at the rink the other day and uh which is a new thing that i'm gonna start doing again which is very exciting um but i was at the rink on monday and this girl working my mom was like oh did you see who was working and it was a girl that i my mom used to teach but i used to give her a few lessons every month and she was a child when I taught her. And I was like, wait, how old is she now? Like 14? Wait, but she's working here, so she'd have to be 16. And my mom was like, Nikki, she's like 17, 18. And I was like, what? How does that even make sense? And then I was like, oh, I haven't seen her since 2019, maybe early 2020. So I haven't seen her in four years. It's just very funny that... You and your mother were like bickering over one year worth of life. Because you said That's 14 a big to jump, No, though. but you said 14 to 16. And then she goes, well, oh, she's 17 or 18. Like, that is true. okay, <laughs> you can look 17 or 18 when you're 12 to 14. So she it's did like that, not- that same day she did that for someone. I was like, how old are they? Like 13? And she goes, no, 12. And I was like. It's like what? it's like who the, at that point it's <laughs> so useless to be like okay that's so funny like what great maybe it would be if you were to say like a grade that they were in like oh are they in seventh grade it's like no sixth grade you're like well it's almost the same thing it's funny though how like drastic that is when you're that age because that seems so different and now like I don't know being twelve or thirteen or being in sixth grade or seventh grade it's like so minimal. But when you're only 11, 12 years old, that is a huge, huge difference. Yeah. I, you, you grow so much in that time. So there is a yeah. lot of change and everybody's changing on a different pace mm-hmm. to like become an adult. So there's like so much that's, yeah. that's happening. So it is a big deal. But like when you're referring to someone's age or something, it doesn't really matter because as an outsider, you're not seeing most of the change. You see like the voice change. Yeah. You see the height change or like the weight change and like how they start to become more of an adult versus yeah. like a kid, you know, or like whatever that might be. Or like style change because what's popular. Like right. you don't see. So it doesn't so like 16 to 17 doesn't really make that big of a difference. I guess 18 kind of because then they're like an adult adult. But yeah. like also whatever. Someone I was talking to some kid. I can't remember who right now, but. I was like, oh, what grade are you going into? And they, or what grade are you in? And they said fourth grade. And I was like, oh, that was my favorite. And they looked at me like, what are you talking about? But I was like, no, for real. Like I felt that I had to explain based on their look they gave me. And I was like, no, for real. Like all of my friendships in fourth grade were like the best and like formed what they were going to be throughout middle school and throughout high school like four fourth grade was a really big year for me and I also had a really awesome teacher and they were like oh okay I was like how has it been for you <laughs> they're like it's whatever <laughs> I was like oh, okay cool but they're also in fourth grade so they're not like full-fledged <laughs> massively complex sensitive sentences and like yeah. thoughts with like all sorts of extra like critical thinking tied into it it was just so funny because they were like lady what are you talking about i think you're spoiled with conversations with scarlet who is truly like a 30 year old every time you talk to her because most children cannot hold a conversation like that one yeah true i don't know i used i i don't know i i love having conversations with kids because i love being able to like pull information That sounds weird, but like get them talking. That used to be like my specialty in teaching, like the kids that wouldn't talk in their lesson or like didn't seem like they were having a good time. Then that coach would be like, can you teach this person a lesson and like see if they'll talk to you? And that was like my specialty. But I I don't know. Maybe I'm out of practice. I think it's just because you care. 
Like when you're teaching them how to skate, you care. And people are not stupid. Like they know when yeah. you care or don't care. True. And I feel like a lot of the skating teachers are just there to teach someone to skate and they don't care how they do or who don't care if they yeah. show up or don't care if they're not there the next week or whatever. Yeah. Like they don't. We're like, you I do care, care a lot. Yep. And it's really <laughs> easy to you gravitate towards people who actually care. Yeah. I would have used a different phrase that I like a lot more, but I'm not going to we use the guess. give a <laughs> phrase. But it is it is true. I do care a lot. A lot of times I I don't know. It's weird to think about because it's just like natural that I do care. Like if someone's taking a 30 minute lesson from me, it's like I fully am invested in them for those 30 minutes. And like I care a lot what happens. But I guess that is not the case for a lot of things. But I guess that just it is because I love doing that. It's also your personality. Like there's a lot of people who would just show up to like (laughs) a job and just do the job yeah you know like that's also not my personality like i'm not gonna Mm -hmm. just show up and just kind of do it yeah that's uh, that's why like i I don't even have to say like corporate jobs but like business like company jobs don't work well with me because like the way i'm not gonna call it capitalism because it's not just capitalism it's just the way like businesses work is like the way that the hierarchy and stuff works is like it's set up so that you don't have to give it your all you just have to give it the absolute bare minimum and if you yeah, give it that. anything more then you're giving too much of your time and yourself to it because you're not going to get rewarded in the way that you hope that you'll get rewarded, even if yeah. they tell you they will. I can count like every single person that I know that works at a job that tries to go above and beyond never, ever has gotten like the accolades and then they leave and they put someone in the position and then that person in the position is getting paid like five times what the other person was That's so sad and they and they're doing a worse job than than you were right and yeah. you're like well, this doesn't make sense but that's why at least from the conversations i've had with people in like the tech stuff that's why there's so many bouncing around of jobs because mm-hmm. if you stay at your job you'll never get the pay raise that you deserve or you should have to be at that level but if you leave that job you go somewhere else you'll get paid more yeah more like what's what you're supposed to be getting paid for that job and then you can come back to the other job that you had if you really love that company and then you can get the actual amount of money but if you stayed at that company and went up you'd get like a couple thousand dollars more than yeah. so it's like not that it's always about money but like you but know it's when, about like getting what you deserve right or and, getting what you're putting in yeah because that's like the biggest thing that i was taught really early on in real estate was like you're only going to get out what you put in like if you're not going to work very hard you're not going to get very much yeah it's it's very self-employed yeah mentality it's like if you don't want to work for it you're not going to get it and then like nobody's just going to come to you you have to go right get it right and you have to be what you assume is annoying because you see all of what you're doing but Uh, most people don't see anything of what that is the most annoying part about all of it same thing with social media same thing with music same thing with I feel like the most annoying person because I am thinking about the thing constantly. I'm saying the thing constantly, but then you have to realize that 1% of the people are actually seeing it or however much percent. So it's like there, you might be annoying to anyone and everyone. (laughs) Like that's like the thing of trying not to be cringy and no matter what you're going to be cringy, like it's just what it is. But that that is the hardest thing about being like on social media or running a business and trying to market is like you have to get to the point of annoying yourself and that's when you're actually going to be getting to an audience. Does that make sense? The way I said that? Kind of, but <laughs> the audience doesn't just magically come because you're annoying yourself. No, no, no. <laughs> Which, I found that out too. No. Yeah. No, that's not how that's that not works. How it works. <laughs> not at all. No, you the You just have to, you just have to assume for like every 10 or 20 things that you post there, no one's going to see it. Like you can post it 10 times and the people are going to see it one time or 20 times. I'll see it one time. Not they're going to see it 20 times. Speaking of, I haven't posted in three days. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. It's freaking me out. Well, then why haven't you done it? Because I have to edit a thing. That sounds like a really bad excuse if you ask me. It is. 100%. I, I almost cursed on here because of you. 
I'm going to edit the thing and I'm going to post it. What is the thing? Why are you being vague? From the workshop. I wanted to post that. It's taking you that long. It's been like four days. (laughs) This is the world we live in. What are you doing with Uh, your life? I don't know. I'm just trying to live, man. How dare you? Did you use that? Did you use the part where I call you bro? You called me dog. Dog. Did you use that? We're posting it on Saturday, okay? (laughs) Okay. You know I did that. I I don't remember. That was like six days ago. I don't remember. Yeah, clearly you can't even remember what you did yesterday, probably. No, I really can't. (sighs) You're killing me. (laughs) You're killing me. You're really killing me. Oh, gosh. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great day, too. I was talking to them. Yeah, I know you were. I saw from the corner of my eye that you weren't you weren't talking to me. A little turd. I do hope you have a good day. Who, me? Yeah. You. No, I wasn't paying attention to you anymore. I stopped paying attention because you wanted to talk to them and not me. So whatever. <laughs> it's not for me. Okay. I hope you have a great day. I hope you get to do something very fun. I hope you rest if that's what your body needs. I hope you eat nutritious food. I hope you eat all the nutrients. I kind of want more coffee. Oh, that's a bad idea. Nah, I'll have more coffee. I just had coffee. I want more coffee. But then I, I slept okay last night. So like maybe more coffee is a bad idea. Yeah. But also, you I know, slept we only live once. eight hours last night. You know, you always sleep an hour more than me. It's pretty much constant. And uh, I slept seven hours. So sounds exactly right. But I think an hour of that was crazy dreams that I just couldn't get out of. Which that doesn't mean you sleep worse. It just means you have no, crazy dreams. It just makes my head coming. hurt. You got to start tuning into your body and finding better adjectives because I'm pretty certain it's not your head actually hurting. I'm pretty certain it's you had to use your brain for a minute and <laughs> now you're concerned. <laughs> and then it hurt. No, because yesterday you were like, I feel sick. And I'm like, what do you mean you feel sick? I just feel kind of tired and a little off and i go sick and that are two very different things because yeah. sick means you don't go do anything for a day and you lie low and yeah, you're like i didn't quite feel that it, exactly so then when i ask you how you feel and you're like i feel sick hey I'm like, I'm that trying. doesn't work i'm trying i will continue to try yeah i mean that's that's all we're gonna get you know <laughs> I mean, you're no Jedi, and I keep trying to tell you that there is no try, but you're just going to do it anyway. Oh, my gosh. That's what my dad used to always mm-hmm. tell me. I'd go, okay, I'll try. And he goes, there is no try. There's, is that the saying? There's only do. Do or do not. There is no try. Yes. Oh, man, you're just really nailing me with the, <laughs> the, the speed at which I just pulled that Star Wars quote out of my butt was so good. Man, you wow. know I like Star Wars by just how I, it was meant to be. Man, if you had taken skating lessons from my dad, you would have been like. We would have been best yeah, friends. Got it. Um, Oh, God. The amount of analogies in Star Wars that would Between have happened. Between the two of you with analogies, I, I can't. <sighs> you know, <laughs> I'm just glad that I don't have the Star Trek analogies because those just seem too heady. I don't, I can't get behind Beat those. Beat me up, Scotty. That one's the only one that I like. <laughs> <laughs> that one's the easy one. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I don't really have any sitting in my pocket for that. Yeah, we don't watch enough Star Trek. I mean, we don't even watch I Star do Wars, like really. I like Star Trek, though. I like the new Star Trek. I don't love the old Star Trek. I like Tre- the old well, one. I mean, there's a reason that you like it. It's nostalgic to you. Yeah, it is. Just kind of like I like the old Star Wars because it's nostalgic to me. Also, it's just good. Yeah, but when you watch it and like, if you're comparing it to new stuff, you're like, well, this really feels like it's from the 70s and 80s. Fair. You're like, the sound effects alone sound so thin oh, and like visuals. bright. And you're like, Ugh. Yeah. We watched, I don't think we've talked about this on the podcast. Maybe we have. We watched, um, when was it, last year or two years ago when uh, Return of the Jedi was in theaters? Oh, it was that last was, year. That was miserable, man. I love Star Wars. That used to be my favorite Star Wars movie. This did not... Going to see this did not change my opinion on it. We may have talked about that. But man. It was rough. Something that does not does not need to be seen on such a large screen is an old movie like that. I appreciate what it was, what it is. But man, it, does, it shouldn't be seen on a 40, 60 foot screen. I built this. Okay, for the audio listeners, if you do not watch uh, her vlogs, she... 
Oh, we talked about it on the podcast. Yeah, we but bought I, you and should built. watch the vlog. Okay, stop moving it around. It's coming through the microphones. Thank you. I want to roll it to you. Uh, you know, th- for the people that are watching, they saw you rolling it around like a child. It's fine. <laughs> for the audio listeners, the Lego that we mentioned a few episodes ago is sitting here on the desk and or table, and Nicole built it. Um, she cried. I did. Uh, you can watch her vlog to uh, get some more insight and in how that went for her. Well, the action. And, uh, that's called plastic bending. That's not actual <laughs> action. Um, and uh, she built it all by herself with no help from me. There was a tiny bit of help from me. Um, I had a piece backward and she, she had to fix it. She doesn't know how to follow directions, but it's okay. Um, she built it all by herself. I didn't do anything. And... Look at it. It's so great. It's, it's really it's, cute. Okay. I was talking to the audio listeners. You can't look at it. It's got pink wheels with white rims and yellow bearings and a pink toe stop with this sea foamy turquoise high top shoe looking thing with a white toe box and yellow quote unquote laces with a darker turquoise tongue. Um, look at you with the knowledge. And the lower of the shoe is like a cardboard brown (laughs) it matches your um your desk chair but i don't know what color that would be i don't know what color to call it oh yeah there you go like a walnut leather is the color of the toe of the the lower of the shoe with the mid being like a gray and then the the uh, truck is gray they had other accessories to put on the side but i liked how that looked yeah, the rainbow. Okay, yeah. so what she's referring to is there's a little rainbow that is dark turquoise, uh, a pastel yellow, and a pastel pink with another dark turquoise line, and it's going out kind of like a rainbow on the side towards so the heel. So cute. It is a very cute Lego. Lego um, did a good job with this. We could have bought three of them and built a boom box, a skateboard, and a, and a what's it called? True. A roller skate. Or you could buy four and stick something in it and have it wearing skates. You could put. I don't know why you're here. so stuck on four. What are you gonna put? Why do you need four? Why can't you have two? Two would make sense for a human, but I'm thinking like an animal. What kind of animal are you gonna stick in that? A cat. You're crazy to think a cat would be okay with that. <laughs> Someone said that they were like, "Are you gonna put Kevin on the skates?" I was like, "Oh my god, she would. She would murder. freak out. <laughs> she would kill someone." Anyway, this is really cute. I'm glad we got it. It is very cute. If you, I know a lot of you listening to this bought it as well, and I hope you are enjoying it as much as I did. I know a lot of you did not cry while building it, um, but I did. It's a milestone. You've never built a Lego, and you are hard on yourself, and that's the first time that you've uh, done anything with a direction, and you know <laughs> you almost cry building ikea furniture too so it's pretty much the same thing this is true you read directions you don't like to follow them you cry it's you know yeah makes sense i it, get it it all adds up yep that's why you have me build the legos and do the uh, ikea furniture i finished my coffee that's really dope are we getting more i don't know Woo! it's a good little sound huh a little yeah, lego a clip sound. that was uh the pot of a uh, Venus flytrap Lego getting clicked back into itself. Just so you know. Are you just taking it apart? And... Boop. Yep, wow. I'm just playing with it. I'm going to break Such it if skill. I keep playing with it. Okay. I should probably stop. Well, this won't yeah. break it. I'm twisting it. Anyway, okay. okay. I feel like I'm done wasting people's time with me ta- explaining what a Lego looks like. <laughs> and, you oh, should you go get it, the though. one wheel on wrong. What do you mean? <sighs> I am okay. Well, everything I said is a lie now, guys. I did. I'm doing one thing here. What did I do wrong? You didn't put the. You didn't put uh, the wheel all the way in. That was probably the one that I was like, "Oh, I got this one first try." Yep, that's probably exactly what it was. Okay, and Nicole's officially built this whole Lego by Yay. herself with no help from Taylor. <laughs> oh, Taylor broke it. <laughs> <laughs> How dare we? Okay. Oh my gosh. She's okay. Fixed. Have a lovely day. Thank you so much for being here. If you would like episodes early and exclusives, which there's one more that I need to make available. Yes, there is. Ooh. Um, please get a membership on glitteringcatlitter.com or on YouTube. And yeah, we'll see you later. Bye.